In Ukraine today, both pro and anti Russia factions held rallies in Crimea's capital. Hundreds of people gathered showing their support to remain as part of Ukraine, waving Ukrainian flags and balloons. The Ukrainian interim prime minister is set to fly here to the U.S. this week to discuss the crisis in Crimea. He will meet with President Obama on Wednesday. And while hundreds attended the pro-Ukraine rally, thousands attended the pro-Russian rally. In one week, voters in Crimea will weigh in on whether the region should rejoin Russia or remain part of Ukraine. Well, some sad news to pass along from the National Football League. Detroit Lions owner William Clay Ford passed away this morning at the age of 88. Ford owned a controlling interest in the Lions for 51 years. He bought the team in 1963 for $4.5 million. He was the only surviving grandson of Henry Ford who founded the Ford Motor Company. During his tenure, Ford helped keep the Thanksgiving Day tradition in Detroit, although the Lions never reached the Super Bowl. Well, it's one of the worst diseases that strikes senior citizens by any standard. Alzheimer's disease steals memories, erases names, faces, family, and friends. Now, researchers have developed a way of determining those most at risk for developing this disease in most cases. Researchers looked at the blood of healthy elderly people, checking for fatty molecules called lipids. Those who had lower levels of lipids were more likely to develop Alzheimer's. The test was over 90% accurate. Researchers and the Alzheimer's Association point out that other labs need to validate that this test really works. Well, when it comes to daredevil stunts, this one might be second to none. Most people would think that climbing to the summit of Mount Everest would be the ultimate, but not Joby Ogwin. This guy has already climbed up and down Everest, but now he's planning to fly off the summit in a specially designed flight suit at speeds of more than 150 miles an hour, 10,000 feet down to base camp. He's actually soared past the Matterhorn before, sort of a test run, you could say. And this stunt, he says, he'll perform on TV in front of an audience of millions. It's something I dreamed about when I was a little kid. I always said, you know, when I grow up, this is what I want to do. I want to have a life of adventure. I want to make my living and career from that. And I've been very fortunate to be able to do it. Ogwin is 39 and admits he's a little bit fearful about this death-defying stunt, but says he's confident that he'll complete the world record setting leap. Kyle Miles, crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Well, speaking of leaps, we, we leaped into spring-like temperatures today, didn't we? Uh, yeah. And it, tomorrow well, as well. Yeah, we're going to make another leap tomorrow, but the sunshine really helping us out, making it feel even nicer. Nice shot there from Bloomington. A few cirrus clouds, that's about all, and uh, a sign of things to come for us. Absolutely, and uh, wearing the sunglasses today, you had to have them out mm -hmm. there. It was good. Yeah, it's a nice change, and it not is. because the sun's reflecting off the snow. Either. No, that's good. <laughs> We're good not point. talking about snow for at least a couple of days. That's good. We've got some changes, though. Let's go ahead and show you things are very quiet across the region. We have the satellite and radar on here. We've got some clouds, especially across the northern half of Indiana. But to find any precipitation, a little bit of a light wintry mix coming in off of Lake Michigan across northern portions of the state of Michigan. Here at home, we're dealing with quiet conditions, temperatures in the 40s. It's 40 right now in Albany, 43 in Indianapolis, and 42 in Crawfordsville. Officially at the airport, 42 degrees, breezy, winds out of the west at 14 miles per hour and of course we set those clocks ahead an hour last night so our sun will set now at 746 a little more than an hour away tonight temperatures drop to just 34 degrees we start off around 20 earlier today we'll have steady temperatures on that southwest wind at 10 miles per hour and then a mix of sun and clouds throughout your monday good deal of sunshine and with a southwest wind around 15 to 20 miles per hour that's going to take our temperatures already to the low 50s for the lunch hour. Great day to take that lunch outdoors or maybe get in a walk out around the canal. 60 degrees at 3 o'clock, 57, so we're still holding quite nice at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. 62 in Greensburg, 60 in Indianapolis. These are some of the warmest temperatures that we've had all year long. We did hit the lower 60s one time in February. We'll make it to 58 in Lafayette for your Monday. And then we'll continue this warming trend. Temperatures only dip around 40 degrees by Tuesday morning. As we go into Tuesday afternoon, we'll see those numbers recovering into the low 60s, even some mid 60s. Not entirely out of the question, but that comes ahead of some bigger changes. This is TrueCast. As we jump ahead overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, you see a lot of green on the map indicating 
creating some rain, but then cold air filters in and brings the transition to some snow on Wednesday. Wednesday is going to be the day to watch with temperatures around 34 degrees. And it looks like at this point, and that's a little bit early, but there could be a band of two to four inches of snow across parts of the Hoosier State. Stay tuned for that. By the way, we're only about three and a half inches away from the all time snowfall record. So maybe we'll get there at least a little bit closer. Seven day planning forecast shows that once we get through Wednesday, well, it's a cold Thursday, and then we're back into the 50s for highs to end the week and start next weekend. All right, Kyle, thank you, sir. And uh, Brad is here with a lot going on in the hardwood, huh? Got a lot of basketball, of course. Yeah. It is March, and we're getting toward tourney time. One wrapping up here in Indy, another getting set to go. That's the Big Ten tourney. Purdue, however, will not be coming here with the proper momentum as the Boilers wind it down at home with an L on the board. We'll hear from the coach. Some harsh words from Matt Painter coming up.